that you won't let go, so don't let go. And when the going gets rough, hold on. Man, when the going is not rough, still hold on. Just as tight. <laughs> yes, I want to thank uh, Pastor Hannah, the First Lady, once again for giving us another opportunity to minister the Word of God and share an encouraging, inspiring, informative Word with you today. Last week we talked to you uh, about man know thyself. We're going to stay in that same area today, but the focus or the question I'm going to put to you is what do you seek? What do you seek? And we're coming from the Gospel of John, <clears throat> chapter 1, and we'll look at verses 35 through 38, and we'll look at several other verses too, but this is where we pulled this thought from. And the question I have, as I said, what do you seek? Because we are all different people with different life experiences. And because we are different people with different life experiences, the answer to the question, what do you seek, will be different. And I want to be very specific. What do you seek today? Because we can't worry about yesterday. Tomorrow hasn't gotten here. But what do you seek? Not your friend, not your parents, but what do you seek today? Each one of us has a different reason for going to the grocery store, but we all have to eat, so we go to the grocery store. And we go for different reasons. Each one of us has a job. <laughs> As uh, if you're not retired from uh, your job, remember last week you said we never retire from the work that God gave us to do in terms of us revealing ourselves and becoming all that God created us to become. But each person that has a job goes to that job for many different reasons. We go to sporting events. We take vacations and many other things we do seeking Seeking, seeking to enjoy the experience, but it's for different reasons. So what do you seek today based on your relationship with Jesus Christ? What do you seek? What do you seek? We talked about John the Baptist last week, as I said. So I'm going to just look at verse 6 and 8 just to bring back to your remembrance. It says in John chapter 1, the gospel of John, verses 6 and 8, or 6 through 8, there was a man sent from God, and we say that John was sent and we are sent from God, or sent by Christ into the world. His name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him, through John's witness, might believe. Verse 8 says, he was not that light. We share that John knew who he was. He knew what he was supposed to do, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That light, that was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. We share that John came into the world for the sole purpose of being a witness. He came to usher in the coming of Jesus Christ, the true light. John, as we said, was the agent of salvation, but he wasn't the object. Jesus was the object. John came to point man to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who would give himself to restore or reconcile the relationship that we had with God prior to Adam rebelling in the garden. In verse 9, we say that again, that it's the true light that gives light to every man coming into the world. That shares with us that there's a responsibility that has been given to you and I. And through God's sovereign power, Think about this now. Through God's sovereign power, every man, every man in the, on the entire face of the earth, every man 
has enough light to be responsible for making the decision to accept or reject Jesus Christ. In verses eight and nine, we said he was in the world. Uh, well, put it this way. Let's go to verse 10. The Bible says that he was in the world and the world was made through him. This scripture used to used to really it, it still boggles my mind sometimes. Uh, and, and he says he was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. Just imagine if your children didn't receive you, parents. So Jesus came to the world. He came to the world. Then he came to his own, the Jewish nation, and they did not receive him. It's mind boggling that you can give life and many parents are experiencing this today. That they've given life to their children and the children don't receive them. It's truly amazing. But Jesus had already experienced this and he made it. That means that you and I will make it. Look at John 12 verses 12 and 13. It says, but as many as received him to them. He gave the right to become children of God. Who were those who received him? They were those who were born, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are the ones who believe. But what do you seek? You believe him. What do you seek? See, we follow people. Uh, 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 someone may say, hey, I'm going to 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 uh, the store over here. And I will. I don't know where it is. Well, follow me. We're following them for a reason. You're following Jesus. But why are you following him? What do you seek? What do you seek? Do you seek to have an experiential knowledge of Jesus? Do you seek ex an ex experiential experience? Do you seek that experience with him that takes you farther beyond just knowing his name? See, it's okay to know his name. That's one thing. And a lot of people know his name. But how many know him? And ask yourself, do you know him? See, do you know him? Do you have a relationship with him, an intimate one? See, where he can reveal to you who you are, why you're here, what you're supposed to be doing. You see, without that, we just exist. And we're very flippant about life. We're doing this one minute, doing this while I feel. You know, people feeling their way through life. Living life based on how they feel. When we're supposed to dominate feelings. Feelings are true, they come. Feelings are here for a reason, but they should be ruling you. And many of us allow our feelings to rule them. And that gets us in a lot of trouble. Do you seek a sign? Do you seek a miracle? Do you seek to be introduced? Listen to this carefully. Do you seek to be introduced to who you really are? Not what you do. Because only Christ can reveal that to you. And we need to know who we are. Not who our friends say we are. Not who our employer says we are. Not who our parents says we are. Because they did not create us. The manufacturer, God, the creator, he knows why he created you and gave you the breath of life this morning. It is for a specific reason. Yes, it is. Do you seek to tell others about him? 
Do you seek to tell based on your relationship with him? Is it all about you? Do you seek to share him with others so that they will become aware of who they are? Look at verses 35 through 42 and look at what John says. Now, this is the third time that John gave his witness. You can look at verse 19, verse 29, and here in verse 35, it's the third time John gives his witness. John was consistent about his witness. He didn't stray from the reason which he was sent as the forerunner of Christ. He didn't get off of that track and decide to do something different. He stayed focused on the mission. Look at what he says here. It says again the next day, John stood with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus, he's focused. He's looking at Jesus. What are you looking at? Lord, have mercy. Again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked. He said, behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak and they followed him. They followed Jesus. Now, they heard this in the second witness because John said, Behold the Lamb of God. But this took on a different meaning to this this time. Because they took action. They struck out. They left John. John basically was turning them over. This is the one that you should be following. I've taken you as far as I'm supposed to take you. There's one on the scene now that you need to follow. So the two disciples heard him speak and they followed him. They heard him speak and they followed him. Then Jesus turned. Just picture this. Jesus turned and seeing them following him. Seeing them follow him said to them, they didn't speak to Jesus first. He made the first move. He spoke to them. What do you seek? He's asking us that question today. You're following me, but what do you seek? What do you seek? They said to him, rabbi, which is to say, when translated teacher, and a rabbi, as we know, was a master teacher, all right? So where are you staying? Can you just picture this conversation? <laughs> Where are you staying? He said to them, Jesus said to them, come an invitation and see for yourself. Come and see, come and learn. Come and get an understanding. Come so I can introduce, spend some time with me. Come and see, because in the coming and seeing, it will truly be revealed why you're following me. Come and see come and see they came and saw where he was staying and look remained with him that day the bible says now it was about the 10th hour right about 10 a.m in the morning okay look verse 40 one of the two who heard john speak and followed him. There are many that hear Jesus speak and you won't follow him. You go ask somebody else. You hear him speak, you know the Lord's talking to you. But you won't follow him. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew. We hear a name here. All right? We don't know really who the other one was. At least it doesn't say it here. All right? John speaking and followed him was Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother. What did Andrew do? He first found his own brother, Simon, and he said to him, we have found the Messiah. Now, they had been with John all this time before Jesus came. And in following Jesus, they found out that what John said was true. We found the Messiah. We found, they had experiential knowledge because they spent time with Jesus. 
No one had to tell them in terms of uh, uh, who Jesus was as far as an experience was because each individual, you have your own experience. I can tell you what Jesus is to me and what he's done to me. But can you articulate what he is to you? Because that is the testimony. That is the witness that you give to others. Your own personal one. What do you see, ladies and gentlemen? Do you seek to know who you are? Do you seek to know him first? So that he can introduce you to who you are so that we can stop guessing uh, as it relates to what we're supposed to be doing. You were designed and put here for a specific purpose. There is something you are supposed to be doing here on the earth to make it better, to usher in the kingdom of God, the rule of God. You're just that special that he wants you to do that. <laughs> he wants you to do that. He gave that task to us. So it says, he first found his own brother Simon and he said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And look at what Andrew did. He didn't just talk see, to people. Like many of us do, we tell people about Christ. But we don't bring them to Christ. Look at what he did. And he brought him to Jesus. Andrew brought Simon, his brother, to Jesus. He brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, you are Simon, the son of Jonah. All right? This is, this, this, from a, this is who you are, but let me tell you who you'll become. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. You see, when we come to him, we come to him just as we are. But then he tells us what we will become. We aren't that when we first come to him. We can't really see that, but he's already seen that. Because he created you. And when he created you, he created you. See, with everything in mind. See, from the end to the beginning. From the beginning to the end. He knows every mistake you'll make. He knows every sin, missing the mark. He knows every time that you aren't feeling like following him. He knows every time you're not feeling like coming to church. He knows when you're telling a lie and, 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 and you don't come to church. <laughs> he knows everything. But he asks us questions, see, to bring us into the reality that we don't know enough without him. Are you listening to me? What do you see today? What do you seek? You shall be called seekers. When Jesus looks at you, he's not concerned. When God looks at you, he's not concerned. Overly concerned that he's worried. Oh, they're not going to become uh, what I created them to become. He has a plan for your life. He already sees you there. He will not make you get there. He will not. He will not rule over your will. He's not looking for a robot. He wants you to choose to follow him. Just as those two disciples that were with John left and followed Jesus. It was a choice they made. And for making that decision, Andrew started his work with first finding his brother. He believed John's testimony. And by spending time with Jesus, he found out that it was all true. We have found the Messiah, which is translated to Christ. We found him. See, we found him. Look at what the word of God says here. It says now, when he says, come and see, all of the above which we have written, come and see, this is Jesus' invitation. Humbly, lovingly invited us to come and see for yourself. Don't listen to what everybody says. Come see for yourself. Come see for yourself. 
yourself who I am so I can tell you who you are. No, you're not there yet, but I designed you, gave you everything you need to arrive just on time with everything that you need. When a baby is born, when a little baby is born, that, that baby has everything it needs to become an adult. At birth, you, at birth, spiritually, you have what you need to become all that God desires for you to be. But what do you seek? Do you seek to become that? See, do you seek? He did not answer their question uh, directly. He told them, come and seek. Come. What do you seek? Come. What do you have to say to me? Come. What is your request? Come. What do you want to really know? Come. Do you know why you're following me? We must know why we're going where we say we want to go. We must know why. Do you know why you're following Jesus? Jesus asks, what do you seek? That's a question that we really should be asking ourselves. What do you seek? What? Because only you know what you seek. I don't know. Only you know what you seek. Are you seeking to drown him with your problems? Are you seeking to glorify the Father in Jesus' name? Are you seeking the favor of God? And eternal life. And see the word shares with us. If our eyes be single in this. In what? The faith seeking the favor of God. And eternal life. Then we would be full of life. Full of the knowledge that we need. See to make it here on earth. When they called him rabbi. They were saying pastor teacher. Teach us. Teach us. Saints of God. Unless we. Give up ourselves. Unless we give up ourselves and be ruled and taught by him, we'll never know who, where, the why, and the what of our lives. The experience of a relationship with Jesus inspired Andrew. The experience of the relationship with Jesus was so awesome it inspired Andrew to go find his brother. And it said to first, he first found. That means there was going to be a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eight. This was what he was put here to do. Become a disciple, a witness to Jesus Christ. And because Andrew did what he did, see, we are a that's evidence that we're able to do what God calls us to do. So what do you seek today? What do you seek? If what you seek lines up with the will of God, then you can keep holding on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, every wind that blows won't blow you off. Won't blow the leaf off. Uh-uh. You hold on tight to his unchanging hand. But it's difficult to hold on when you don't know why you're holding on. See, when you don't know why you're holding on, you, you're stuck to let go and somebody else come up with something. But if you know and trust him, I am currently to inspire you today to hold on tight. Because if you're not sure, but you say, I'm going to hold on anyway, oh, he'll keep it. He'll keep it and reveal to you. See, everything that you need to know. But if you get disconnected from the source, then your light won't shine. Stay plugged in. Stay connected. Today, ask him. Share with him. God, I don't know what I see. Reveal it to me. I'm in a relationship with you. 
He's going to point you to his mind, which is this word of God. Everything he wants us to know is in the word. Take the time for the week. Take an hour. Man. Out of each day, one hour, 30 minutes. Take one hour, Kirk, take 30 minutes out of each day. Set it aside to read the word of God. And watch your life change. And it will be revealed to you why you're here. Seek him. Seek him. Are you following me? Amen. Seek him. Seek him, seek him, seek him. And your life will change. And you will have, or you will be better for that reason. God bless you this morning. May heaven continue to smile upon you. May you continue to keep on keeping on. God loves you. And he desires a relationship with you. God has some work to be done on the earth. And he is deploying you and I to take care of his business here on earth. If there is any, I don't be off of saying, you can take this time right now to ask or invite Christ into your life. Ask him to forgive you for your sin. Let, let him know, God, hey, I don't know how to do X, Y, Z. God, I want to follow you. I want to enter into a relationship with you. I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. And he'll come in. And he'll start taking care of business. As long as you allow him to. He will.